We ask, O oh Lord, that you open the floodgates of heaven and let the rain of your presence fall upon us this morning. The presence of God that refreshes, the presence of God that revives, the presence of God that lives. Let that presence fall upon us this day, this hour, to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Take all the glory. Lord, we worship you. Wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, please let us lift up our voices and let us appreciate God. Let us give him praise. Let us give him glory. Let us worship him because him alone, he is worthy. Him alone is worthy to be praised. Him alone is worthy to be glorified. Father, we worship you. Father, we give you praise. Honor and adoration be to your holy name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, King of Kings. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. We cannot thank you enough. You have been faithful. We cannot thank you enough. You have you've done all things, oh God. You've looked after us. you protected us. you guided us. you kept us. you preserved us. You gave us life and life in abundance. And most importantly, gave us Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we give you praise. Glory and honor be to your name in the name of Jesus. Glory and honor be to your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. We exalt your holy name. Blessed be your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. You are welcome. I just want to welcome everybody on this platform. This is Royal Christian Center. And I want you to know that if you are connected to this line, that something must touch you. The hand of God will touch you for good. The hand of God will revive you. The hand of God will, will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to stay focused, stay connected. And as you do so, something definitely will happen to you, which is from God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we bow our head to pray? Father, we thank you for this great privilege. We thank you, Oba, for this opportunity to share your word once again. Glory and honor be to your name, O God. Father, we thank you for starting with us through the prayers, then the Bible study, and then the praise and worship. Now, Lord, we want to share your word. We ask that by the power of your spirit, O God, let the spirit of God have his way this morning through your word, O God. Let your word touch every man, touch every woman that will listen in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, oh God, that even people that will connect to this line afterward to listen, Lord, they will be blessed by your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. That the church of Jesus Christ will continue to march forward and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Thank you for this great opportunity. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have an expression even at this hour as we discuss your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate all the ministers that have ministered uh, this morning, the Bible study ministration, the word, the, the, the praise and worship. God bless you. My prayer is that the Lord will continue to increase you. The Lord will continue to anoint you with fresh anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so this morning I want us to go again into God's word. What God is telling us this morning is about time to move forward. It's about time to move forward. I want us to know by this time last year, it is one year now all of this COVID lockdown started. It's about one good year now. You and I have been in the place of prayer. You and I have been looking on to God. You and I have been trusting the Lord to weather through this journey. It is one year now. So it is time for us to move forward. It is time for us to look at what next the Lord is about doing in our life. Can we go to Joshua? Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. And I want to read from verse 1 to verse 3. At this time, Moses has died. And the work of God has to continue. 
the children of God had to continue moving forward. God's plan does not stop with man. Man does not have control over the plan and the plan and the purpose of God. Now, Moses, who brought them out from Egypt through the wilderness as somebody has died. But what God planned for the children of Israel will continue. Just like you and I, what God planned for us will continue no matter what is happening around or within us. The plan and the purpose of God definitely will continue. And the Bible said in that Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, I read from verse 1 to verse 3. Reading from the New Living Translation, it says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever, wherever your feet, your wherever you set your feet, you will be, it will be, it will be the land I have given to you. Wherever you set your feet is the land I have given to you. That is God instructing Joshua. Joshua, listen, Moses have died. Joshua, listen. My servant has finished his work. Now, I want you to carry on and take my people, take the people of Israel to where I have prepared and planned for them. Take them forward. Take them to my purpose. Take them to my plan for them. My brother, my sister, I don't know what has happened in the past one year in your life. Some of us, we've lost friends. Some of us, we've lost our jobs. Some of us, you even have lost your dreams, your desires, the things you have planned. But I want you to know, no matter what you have lost, it is not a time to stay in one place. It is a time to move forward. God is calling us as a church. God is calling us as a people to move forward. No matter what has taken place, no matter what has happened in this one year that is past, a lot of people have lost their jobs, lost money, lost lives. For example, I lost a friend, a good friend of mine in all of this one year. But do you know what, brothers and sisters, no matter what you have lost, no matter what you have lost, the truth of the matter remains that God wants you and I, the church of Jesus Christ, to continue marching forward. Moses, the servant of God, who brought them out from Egypt. He was their leader. He was the one that was hearing from God. He was the one that was leading them. He was giving them instruction from God and they were following him. I wonder, I begin to imagine how devastated that some people, that some of the children of Israel would have been. Moses died. Some of them will be confused. Who is going to hear for us from God? Who is going to lead us again? But do you know one thing, brothers and sisters? God always has a plan. And God always has his own plan to accomplish his purpose in the life of man. As Moses is growing old and finishing his assignment, God is already preparing a servant for himself. My brothers, my sisters, I don't know where you are and I don't know what you have lost. But I have a good news for you. God cannot be killed. God cannot be stopped by any situation or circumstance. The truth of the matter is, God has a plan for you. Amen. God has a plan to, to move you forward. So that is why this message is coming to you now. After this one year, it's one year all of this thing started now. The message is coming for us to move forward. Brothers, move forward. Forget what has taken place. Forget what has happened. Learn the lessons of God's period. Learn the lessons of the circumstance of whatever that has happened in our life. And then let's move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we read Philippians chapter 3? Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 13 to 14. Paul is saying here, Philippians chapter 3, reading from 13 to 14. I read from New King James Version and see what it says. It says, brethren, brethren, I call you this morning. I do not count myself to have apprehended, Apostle Paul speaking, but, but one thing I do. Forgetting things, forgetting those things which are behind. I'm reaching forward to those things 
which are ahead of us, ahead of you. He said, I press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul was in that state of his life. He's, he's not looking at what he has achieved. He's not looking at what has taken place. He's not looking at the chains in his hands. He's not looking at the prison that is awaiting for him. But he said, I look at those things and I did not count myself as I have apprehended. I did not count myself as I have, as I have achieved anything. But do you know one thing? I forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward. And that's what the message is today to Royal Christian Center and to anybody online there listening. Hear the word of God. Forget the things that has happened. It's time for us to push forward. It's time for us to reach out forward. It's time for us to reach out to that goal, that goal that God has set before you and I. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle Paul said, I press towards a goal. What is your goal, child of God? What is your goal, children of God? Remember, this past one year, the COVID, the lockdown, would have locked down your dreams, would have locked down your goals. But I want you to know, it is a time to pick up your dreams again. It is a time to pick up the goals again. And it is a time to reach out towards this goal, pursue it, pursue it, run after these dreams, run after these goals God has given to you. It's not a time to allow the past one year to completely and utterly destroy you. Praise God. I tell people, for God has preserved you all through these years, millions of people have died all through this past few months, Thousands of people have died. For God to have preserved you and I is because he has a plan for you. It's because he has a plan for me. It's because he has a plan for us as his people. So it's not a time to still stay down there, but it's a time to pick up that goal. It is a time to pick up that your dream and let us run with it. And that is what Apostle Paul is saying. Leave those things that are past. I count them not. No. But I'm moving forward, reaching out forward to those things which are ahead. Brother, sister, I want to ask you a simple question. What is ahead of you? What is ahead of you? Because if you don't have anything ahead of you, you will have, find it difficult to want to reach ahead of you. It's because Apostle Paul has something ahead of him. He has the call of God. He has the assignment of God. He has the vision God has shown him. And he is, he is persuaded to pursue that vision. What is ahead of you? What is your plan? What are you expecting? Some people are busy out there destroying their fellow Christians, talking down to the body of Christ. They don't know they are working with the devil. What is your vision? Is your vision to move the church of Jesus Christ forward or to pull it back? But here is the word of God. He said that the gates of hell will not prevail. For the church of Jesus will continue to march forward. COVID will not stop us from marching forward. No sickness will stop you and I from marching forward. Not even death. Moses has died. God immediately picked another servant. So no matter what is happening in our time and generation, hear these brothers and sisters. No man, no man holds and hold God at ransom. Not even, no, no bishop. No pastor, no man can hold God at ransom. If you think you cannot do your job, God raises up another to carry the job. Moses is dead. He's finished his own assignment. And God raised up Joshua to carry on this work of God. So brothers and sisters, what is ahead of you? What is ahead of you? What is your heart desire? What is that call of God upon your life? What is that God has called you to do? Carry on doing it. Pursue it. Pursue what God has called you to do. Pursue it and do it and finish it so that we and you can be like Apostle Paul that say, I have finished my work. I have run a good race and I wait for me is crown of righteousness. So shall be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, as a people, as those own people, it's time to move forward. That is the title of this message. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. No matter what you have lost, no matter what you have lost, whether it's life, whether it's your job, whether it's 
sickness, whether you, whatever you have lost, whether your money or businesses, because I learned a lot of people have lost money and business and even life. No matter what you have lost, brothers and sisters, it is not a time to kill your dream and hope. This message is a message of hope for everybody out there who has been so depressed with the situation and circumstance. With everybody out there who thought my dreams and hopes are gone. No, Jesus Christ is still alive. Jesus Christ is still alive. He's at the right hand side of God. He is hope for us. As long as he's still alive, we have hope. We have hope. Our hope is in him. Our hope is in him. Our hope is completely and totally on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. So no matter what happened, God wants his children to move forward. Can you go to Proverbs chapter, chapter 3? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, reading verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and learn not to lean on your own understanding. Verse 6. That in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is wanting us as we carry on to keep trusting in him. How do we move forward? What can help us move forward? One of the things that can help us move forward is in that scripture. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Brothers and sisters, it's a time to trust in God once again. Do not let that dream completely die from you. Do not let that your hope completely die from you. But trust in God. Hallelujah. Trust in God with all your heart. So trust helps us to carry forward. Trust helps us to move forward. Trust helps us to keep going. Hallelujah. In Psalm 32 verse 8, Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. God speaking. And I will guide you with my eyes. Now, we have to trust the word of God. The word of God is saying there, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. God is telling us as a people. God is telling us as individuals. God is telling us as a church. Say, I'm going to give you an instruction. I'm going to teach you my ways. Make sure you follow it. And he says, I will guide you with all with my eyes. God is saying he's going to guide you. God is saying he's going to guide us. So why are you standing there? Why are you stationary? Why are you in one place? It's time to move forward. It's time to move on. And the key to moving on is trusting in God completely and totally. Somebody say amen. Trusting in God completely and totally. Because what do you know what? He guides us with his eyes. How great is our God? How awesome is our God? As billions of people on earth, God guides them with their eyes. He guides his children. He guides us with his eyes. That's what he's saying. In other words, he's watching over us. He's watching over you. He's watching over me. He's watching over his church. And he's guiding us with his eyes. Therefore, that is why I'm confident that no matter what comes, we will overcome. Hallelujah. No matter what comes your way, you are already an overcome a brother. You are already an overcome a sister. You are already an overcome a child of the living God. You are already an overcomer. If you lost job, you are already an overcomer. If you love a friend, lost a friend, you are already an overcomer. If you lost a loved one, you are already an overcomer because that's what God has spoken concerning you. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And he said, and lean not on your own understanding. So the next point there is, it, for us to carry forward, for us to continue to march forward, we have not to lean on our own understanding. Because one thing is, when you lean on your own understanding, when you lean on your own ability, when you lean on your own strength, the strength of man will always fail you. The Bible said, you know, anyone who trusts in the arm of flesh cannot prosper. So when you trust in your own strength, when you trust in your own ability, when you trust in yourself, you cannot go far. Hallelujah. So it is important for us, to, for us to move forward, for us to carry out marching forward. We need to depend not on ourselves anymore. Don't to your neighbor, if you have neighbor with you, you say, don't depend on yourself anymore. We need to not to depend. That's what the Bible says there. It says, and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 5. Chapter 3, reading from verse 5. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust in God. So for us to move forward, we have to depend on God. We have to lean on God's understanding. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. We have to completely depend on God. Because I'm so convinced 
I'm convinced in the word of God that God is taking us higher. God is moving us forward. But we need to rise up and move with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And see what verse 6 said, the last sentence that said, and he shall direct your path. He shall direct your path. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge God. When you acknowledge God, and then he will direct your path. Another point there is, in all of this, seek the will of God. For us to move forward, we need to trust in him. For us to move forward, we need to not depend on ourselves anymore. For us to move forward, we need to seek his will. That's what verse 6 is saying. In all your ways, acknowledge God. In everything we do, we acknowledge God. We say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Lord, not my desire, but your desire. Lord, not what I want, but what you want. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not about what I want. It's not about what you want. It's not about what I think. It's not about what you think. But it's about what God wants. What God is saying and doing in this time and in this age for his children. Praise God. Another, another thing that will help us to move forward. Another thing that will help the church, help you as an individual to much move forward is let the past stay in the past. I say it again. Let the past, let all that has happened in the, in the past one year, let them stay in the past. Do not over, over focus on the failure of yesterday, yesterday. Do not over focus on the failure of the past. Do not let the failure of the past dictate to you now what you think, how you act, and how you feel. Praise God. This is how we are going to move forward. Remember. The message said, it's time for us to move forward. And for us to move forward, we have to trust in the Lord. We have to not depend on our own ability. We have to seek his will. Another thing we have to do, leave the past. Don't dwell in the past. The past has gone. Let the lessons and the experiences of the past, that is a time to leave the past in the past. Do not over-focus on what happened yesterday. Do not overfocus on happen, what happened one year ago. Do not overfocus on, on your failure. Because when you do so, your, these, things, these things that happened in the past will begin to affect how you think now, how you act now, and even how you feel today. So I don't want anything of last year. I don't want anything of the past one year. Begin to affect your thinking now. Begin to affect the way you act or the way you do today. I want your God's word, the word of God, to affect your thinking today. I want the word of God to affect the way you act today. I want the word of God to affect the way you feel today. Praise God. Because you know what? The word of God is always wonderful. The word of God is always strengthening you. The word of God is always lifting you. The word of God is not wanting to talk you down. Some of your friends want to talk you down, want to tell you how you've not done well, want to tell you what you have not done, they would have done better, want to tell you this, that is man for you. Praise God. But do you know what? The word of God is always there to say son, to say daughter, to the child of God, carry on. We can do this. We can finish it. We can finish the race. You've started a race. You will finish it in the name of Jesus. And that is the message for somebody who is wanting to quit, for somebody who is wanting to quit their dreams, quit the hope. No, don't, no do not quit because God Almighty is by your side. He said, 10,000 will fall at the right time. I even a thousand at the left time, but it shall not come near there. Everything might fall beside you, but as long as you keep standing, God is with you because it's God that is keeping you standing. You and I are standing today not because we are better than others, not because we are more prayerful than others, not because we are more, more, more powerful than others. No, but because of his grace. His grace has kept you. His grace has kept every one of us. His grace, his grace has kept the church going. Hallelujah. Therefore, if God has preserved you, if God has kept you, it is a time to move forward. Turn to your neighbor, say, move forward. Turn to the neighbor again, say, move forward. I'm running up now. Hallelujah. So in all of these failures, in all of these challenges, in all of this, hear the word of God. Psalm 145, Psalm 145, verse 14. He said, the Lord opposes all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. Are you that man? Are you that woman? Psalm 145, 145 says in verse 14, the Lord opposes all who fall 
and raises up all who are bowed down. Have you fallen? I'm not here to talk you down, but I'm here to tell you that God is about raising you up again. Are your shoulder bowed down? Are you confused and confounded? The word of God is coming to you this morning. That God raises them who has fallen. Have you fallen for this since the past one year? Have you fallen in the past few months? Have you fallen in the past few weeks? God is raising you up. Just lift up your eyes again and say, Lord, lift me up. Lift me up. A songwriter said, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. That is what God is about to do this morning. He's about to lift you up and let you stand. Somebody say amen. He lifts those who are bowed down. Those who showed us about and God leave them up. Have you lost a loved one? Have you lost a friend that gets you confused and confounded? You cannot understand it. You cannot comprehend losing these loved ones. Have you lost your businesses? Have you lost your money? That you're so confounded and confused. You are bowed down. You feel fallen. I have a good news for you. Our God is a God that restores. He's a God that recovers. He's a God that restores his children. And he says in Psalm 145 verse 14, he opposes those who have fallen and he raises those who bow down in the name of Jesus. That is the message for you, brother, sister. That is the message for you, the church of Jesus Christ. It's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to arise and move forward. Turn to your neighbor, say, arise, and then move forward. Praise God. The final scripture I'm going to. Can somebody go with me to Joshua chapter 3? Joshua, the book of Joshua chapter 3. Book of Joshua chapter 3. And I want to read just three verses there. Verse 5. I jump to verse 9 and to 10. And Joshua said to the people, this is after Moses has died. And God has spoken to Joshua. I said, Joshua, listen, I want you to take my people forward. I want you to take my people where I prepared and promised them. I want you to do that. And God spoken to Joshua. Joshua strengthened and he's speaking to the children of Israel. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, he said, And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify yourself. For God, by tomorrow, will do wonders around you. And that is God's message for us. Sanctify yourself, brothers and sisters, and get ready to move forward. For the Lord will do wonders amongst us. Somebody say amen. Verse 9, see what verse 9, jump to verse 9 in Joshua chapter 5. In that Joshua chapter 3, jump to verse, verse 9. And so Joshua said to the children of Israel, come here. And hear the word of the Lord. Verse 10. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is amongst you, and that he will without fail drive out or drive out from before you the Canaanite, the, he the, the Hittite, and the Hevisite, and the Perizzite, and the Jesusite, and the Amorite, and the Jebusite. God Almighty told Joshua, Listen, call my people. Move forward. As you move forward, I'm going to do wonders. And that is the word of God for us today, brothers and sisters. When you're ready, when you stand on your feet to move forward, when you stand on your feet and say, Lord, your will, not my will. I am going to carry on. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to march forward. Do you know what? God goes ahead of you. He goes ahead of you to prepare wonders. He goes ahead of you to fight your enemies. He goes ahead of you to prepare the play. Hallelujah. So if you're down there, if you're downtrodden, if you're confused, confounded, you've lost friends, you've lost good loved ones, you've lost businesses, you've lost your money. I want you to hear this. As you rise up to go, God will do wonders for you. That's what he did for the children of Israel. As they rise up, Joshua said, Joshua said to the people of Israel, sanctify yourself. For by tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. When you rise up to move, then you will begin to see the wonders of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you rise up to move forward, when you rise up to do the will of God, when you rise up to do what God has called you to do, he will arrange wonders on your part. In other words, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the people who appear to be stronger than you, God will engage into battle and he gives you victory. And that's what that scripture says. Hallelujah. God said, I will give you this land, I promise you. Therefore, the Canaanites, the Hebesites, the Perizzites, and all the sites,
God is taking care of it. Brothers and sisters, I'm closing with this. I don't know what your fear is. I don't know what your Canaanites, those your Canaanites are. I don't know what your parasites are. I don't know what your Jebusites are. You are so terrified and afraid of them, you're not wanting to make a step. You are afraid of them, you're not wanting to take a step. I want you to know, as you arise to take a step, your God will arise to do great wonders for you in the name of Jesus. He will go ahead of you because he's a God. He's the God that goes ahead of his children. The Bible said he was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day for the children of Israel. I want you to know, God will go ahead of you and he will be a pillar of cloud by day and he will be a pillar of fire by night. That every Canaanite Jebusite, Heavy side, whatever side they are, that God Almighty will take care of them. So fear not. Fear not. Move forward. The church of Jesus Christ, move forward. The children of God, move forward. The body of Christ, move forward. Let us move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus will continue to march forward and gates of hell out we not prevail against it in the name of Jesus Christ. So child of God, what are you waiting for? Rise up. What are you waiting for? Rise up. No matter what it is, rise up. I'm encouraging you. Rise up. You can because your God will care for you. Your God will help you. Your God will strengthen you. No matter how seriously who has departed from you, it could be your Moses. Some of you have lost your Moses. But you know what? Your Joshua is still there. Hallelujah. God is raising a Joshua for you. Amen. If you have lost somebody as important in your life as Moses, like the children of Israel are in this situation and circumstance, they've lost their leader. They've lost somebody who is showing them the way, the path to follow, who is hearing on their, on the, from God on their behalf, how devastated they were. But do you know what? God already has a plan. And that's what message today is all about. Child of God. God has already a plan for you. God has a plan already for you. No matter what you have lost, no matter what you are missing, you are just why it's coming forth in the name of Jesus Christ. All you need to arise. All you need to hear the voice of your Joshua and arise with him and let us move forward and attend to that goal and attend to the dreams and attend to the hope which Christ has made available for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus Christ. And I tell and I speak to our young ones, no matter how devastated you are, no matter how confused and confounded you are, arise and let's move forward. Let us change. Let us move. Let us press towards this goal. Upward call in God, in our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Amen. Can we bow our head in prayer? How about our head in prayer? Brothers and sisters, I want to believe that God has spoken to you. It is a time for us to move forward. It is a time for us as God's children, just move forward. I don't know where you are, but the Holy Spirit knows it. I don't know the junction of your life you are at this moment, but I want you to know God knows. I don't know what you have lost, as precious as Moses, the children of Israel. Whatever you have lost might be so precious that you could not imagine parting with such, but it's done. And then you are confused, confounded. I pray, lift up your hands wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your children under the sound of my voice, that no matter what they have lost, Lord God, you are raising their Joshua in the name of Jesus Christ. You are making a way for them as they hear, hearken to this message this morning to rise up and move forward. As they rise up and move forward, I ask for God of wonders to begin to do wonders on their part in the name of Jesus. Every fear, every Jebusite, every Canaanite, every Perizzite, every side that has been disturbing, that have been, that have been causing them to fear today, Lord, we hand them over to you and we ask for God, take care of them. And give your children victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. You will recover. Your children will recover. We will recover. The days, the months, the years, the canker worms have eaten. God who restores is restoring in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. 
Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You've just listened to me. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your personal Savior. You just listened to me and said, oh, yes, that's good. We are marching forward. Oh, that's good. But you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. This message is for you. It's time for you to come to your maker. It's time for you to come to God. So that you can have that dreams alive again. So that you can have Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. You can have, you can have that hope of life once again. For Jesus is the hope mankind have. Jesus is the hope mankind have. There's no other hope for mankind. Our hope is not in sciences. Our hope is not in government. We have seen it in the past one year, how confused, how confounded the government and the, and the scientists world are. But Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, is where our hope is. So this morning, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. I want you to simply say this salvation prayer with me. It's a simple salvation prayer. When you say it, your life will never be the same again. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you now. I believe in my heart that you are the son of God. That you came and you died for me. And you resurrected on the third day. And you're with God. And you gave life for me. You shed your blood for my sins. Today, I open up my heart. Come in. Be the Lord of my life. I receive the forgiveness of your sins, of my sins. I receive the forgiveness of my sins in the name of Jesus. From today, be the Lord of my life. Amen. If you say that prayer, congratulations, brother, congratulations, sister. That's the beginning. That's the starting point. The same prayer I, I made many years ago, and my life never remained the same again. So that is coming to Jesus. That is accepting Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. That is the starting point. Now, what you do from there is to look for a Bible-believing church where the word of God is preached. And go there, wherever you are. If you're in Manchester, just look at us. Just find us. If you're not in Manchester, if you're other places, there are places, there are places, there are churches all over the world where you can go. So just ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and to direct you. He will direct you to a wonderful Bible-believing church where you can grow. Remember I said this is the first step. The next thing is growing in the Lord. The next thing is growing with Jesus Christ. So what you, the only way you can grow is by getting involved in a church. Praise God. Get involved in the church. Grow there. Grow. Get committed there. Serve Jesus there. And as you do so, you will grow in your faith. You will grow in stature. You will grow spiritually. And that's what, I, that's what my prayer is for you. But if you can contact me, my emails are there. My phone numbers are there. They are out there. Please contact me. I will support you as much as God gives me grace to do. God bless you. And I want to pray for every member of our church connected to this line, listening to me. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift every man before you under the sound of my voice. And I ask, oh God, that you watch over your children. The Bible told us that your eyes guide us. From today, I ask for this man, for this woman, for this child, for this teenager, for this son, for this daughter, that Lord God, you will continue to guide us, to lead us. We thank you, oh God, for the past one year, oh God, it's been ups and down, even trials. But Lord, you have seen us through. You have kept us, you have protected us. You have preserved us. And therefore, Lord God, I pray that you who have brought us this far, Lord, you are not abandoning us. You are taking us to the promised land. You are taking us to the place you propose for us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we stand against every power of darkness, every demonic influences, every orchestration from the pit of hell. We stand over the word of God against you. You will not prevail against God's children. You will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. You will not prevail over the lives of God's children in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray today, as this message today says, we are moving forward and we are marching forward. Lord God, everyone under the sound of my voice, we are moving forward and we are marching forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. 
cover every family represented here in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover you and your household in the blood. No evil shall befall you. No evil arrow shall touch you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is your shield. Jesus is your protection. Jesus is your cover. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run inside of it. And we are saved. Jesus, you are our strong tower. We run inside of you. And we are protected. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for our children who has gone back to school. Your eyes is watching over them. Your hands are protecting them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we pray. And let the church say a louder amen.